Hello, I'm Ernesto Schifrin, a professor and vice chair of medicine at McGill University and physician in chief at the Jewish General Hospital. I'm a clinician scientist uh, doing translational research. And today at uh, uh, Cafe Ish, I've been asked to uh, present the three best papers but there are hundreds of best papers. So I will be presenting three interesting papers that were published uh, recently. So uh, let me uh, share uh, my uh, screen. And so uh, I will be presenting to you three interesting papers published recently uh, on uh, basic science. The first one from CERC Research uh, addresses the restructuring of gut microbiota by intermittent fasting, which is associated with lowering of blood pressure. This is a graphical abstract of the paper where you can see that hypertensive microbiota are associated with decreased bile acids and enhanced uh, blood pressure. But every other day, uh, fasting or intermittent fasting uh, leads to a change in the microbiota towards a normotensive phenotype with decrease in blood pressure uh, associated with vasodilatation that is mediated by an increase in bile acids that stimulate the uh, TGR5 uh, receptor. In this slide, you can see the decreased food intake associated with decreased weight and decreased blood pressure. And I won't go into the details of the changes in the microbiome, but there is a uh, shift towards a uh, normotensive uh, microbiome. And this is associated with reduced bile acids in the metabolomic analysis Cholic acid supplementation leads to a decrease in blood pressure and oleanic acid treatment of the SHRSP leads to lowering of blood pressure and improved um, uh, vasodilatation by acetylcholine indicating improved endothelial function that is related to uh, oleanic acid effects on the TGR5 uh, receptor. And so these studies demonstrate that blood pressure lowering effects of intermittent fasting involve changes in the gut microbiota and metabolome and implicate disrupted bile acid signaling as novel mechanisms by which gut dysbiosis contributes to hypertension. The second paper, is a uh, research letter published in Circulation Research. Uh, these are shorter uh, uh, papers. And on this year, second year of the pandemic, I thought I should uh, present a paper related to uh, COVID-19. In this uh, study, uh, these authors demonstrate that uh, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, spike protein of the uh, COVID-19 virus impairs endothelial function via downregulation of ACE2. What they show here, using a pseudovirus that expresses the spike protein, that there is an inflammatory response in uh, hamsters that are inoculated with this uh, pseudovirus at the level of the lungs, that this is associated with a decreased expression of ACE2 and as well of uh, ENOS. Same thing can be observed in human pulmonary artery endothelial cells with decreased ACE2 expression and uh, uh, de uh, increased uh, AMPK or phospho-AMPK. Uh, the, uh, these changes are associated in the uh, S1 protein uh, treated uh, uh, hamsters with alterations in the structure of uh, mitochondria as seen in the lower panel. 
changes in uh, mitochondria are uh, leading to uh, changes in uh, oxygen consumption, in glycolysis, which is increased, uh, and acidification of endothelial cells. And this leads to changes in endothelial function. Uh, here, the authors overexpressed uh, two uh, types of ACE, one that is more stable, ACE2D and ACE2L, which is more unstable. And you can see clearly that when ACE2 is unstable and it is uh, easily degraded, then endothelial function is uh, impaired, whereas uh, um, the use of sodium nitroprusside is not associated with any changes, indicating that this is an endothelial cell uh, effect. The authors conclude that a dysregulated renin angiotensin system due to ACE2 reduction may worsen endothelial function, leading to endotheliitis. However, these results suggest that the S protein exerted endothelial cell damage overrides the decreased virus infectivity associated with decreased ACE2, the receptor for the virus. And so there's less infection, but there is still increased endothelial cell damage, and this overrides the decreased infectivity. And this conclusion suggests that vaccination generated antibody and or exogenous antibody against the S protein not only protects the host from SARS-CoV-2 infectivity, but also may inhibit S protein induced endothelial injury. The third paper that I want to show you comes from cardiovascular research. It relates to a technique that is, I believe, uh, extremely important for the future, even already the present. Uh, single cell RNA sequencing here reveals cell type and artery type specific vascular remodeling in male spontaneously hypertensive rats. Here is the graphical abstract. The authors uh, included at least 20,000 cells in this uh, sequencing study, single cell sequencing study, and showed that in mesenteric arteries of SHR, they observe changes in contractile uh, proteins. They observe changes as well uh, in uh, uh, extracellular uh, cell, uh, extracellular uh, matrix related um, uh, proteins, uh, including in uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, where you can see here the uh, changes in the different collagens. In aorta, on the other hand, they observe uh, uh, changes in cytokines that are upregulated, such as you can see here, CXCL1, CCL2, but also changes in extracellular matrix and alterations in endothelial cells and as well in uh, mesenchymal stromal cells. Uh, with an increase in an inflammatory phenotype associated with increased macrophages and T cells uh, in aorta. So let's see some of the data. I will not go into details, but this shows uh, the uh, uh, transcriptomic atlas of WKY and SHR mesenteric artery and aorta. And you can see here comparing SHR uh, mesenteric artery here to Wister-Kyoto, the increased uh, effect on uh, genes in smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, and immune cells. And the same thing here for aorta. Here you can see, and I will not again go into uh, details, the cell type and artery type specific genes of Wister-Kyoto, rat, aorta, and mesenteric artery and as well, artery-specific transcriptomic changes and subcluster alterations in smooth muscle cells during hypertension. And for details, I think you have to look at uh, the paper, uh, which is, I believe, extremely interesting and important. So in conclusion, 
These data provide the first cell landscape of resistance and conduit arteries in hypertensive animal models. It also offers a uh, systematic characterization of the dysregulated gene profiles with unbiased artery type specific and cell type specific behavior during hypertensive vascular remodeling. And with this, I thank you for your attention and uh, wish you a good day.